Well, come back. It's been like a, I don't know, an hour uh, since the last video. Let us continue. Um, yeah, we are <laughs> finally in the uh, family conference day one. Oh boy. Very interested to see how all this all will play out. Oh boy. <clears throat> Okay, let me just check. Everything is recording. Good, 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 good. We are golden. Oh boy. Uh, Battler POV maybe? Not sure. They had eaten breakfast at a coffee shop in the station building. By chance, the inside of the shop had been decorated with Halloween colors since it was October. It seemed that Maria had really taken a liking to that. Ever since she had been making a fuzz inside the train about wanting to have a Halloween festival without caring that she was attracting the attention of others. <laughs> she is a free spirit. She is herself, unlike some others at the Usrumi estate. Oh, come on. Halloween is popular in Europe and America, but people are hardly familiar with it at all in Japan. Yeah, in Japan they instead have Obon, I think, yeah. Which is the equivalent of Halloween of uh, dead spirits returning. You know, they make little sticks with uh, animals. I think cow and uh, not sure, maybe ox. Mm. As like uh, trinkets or like, uh, you know, welcoming items for the dead spirits. Uh, yeah. The shopping district was colorfully decorated with orange pumpkins. But the costume para parades of children demanding sweets and saying trick or treat were nowhere in sight. Hmm. Oh, Maria, I have not missed your ooh. I have missed your ooh. I have not. I have. Halloween matsuri ga wasn't completely full inside the train, there were enough people here that almost all of the seats were occupied. Sure. Hold on. Right, 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 yeah. Oh, music just kicked in. <laughs> Arriving at the station. Uh, can't read that. Among them, Maria was making a fuzz kicking her feet back and forth in her seat, while Rosa scolded at her. Rosa had told her many times in a low voice to stop, but Maria was taking no notice whatsoever. Yeah, that's Maria for you. Once Maria gets this way, no matter how much you try to explain the situation or calm her, she doesn't listen. In the past, Rosa used to pamper Maria, Maria and give in to her at times like this. Mm -hmm. But that had probably been the problem. Yeah, I do remember episode 1, the big scene in the rain. Uh, it was quite early on too, in the Rose Garden. Yikes. Almost certainly, the young Maria had formed the wrong impression that if she kept complaining noisily, her mother would give in and listen to her. Mm -hmm. That error had been brought to Rose's attention through an educational book, and since then she had hardened her heart so as not to pamper her beloved daughter. Da -da -da. Yeah, I mean, at least it, at least uh, the dialogue here says that. Uh, <clears throat> Maria is her beloved daughter, like, 
in, in episode 1 she kinda seemed so sick of Maria's acting, the way she acts, yeah. Well, at, as long as she cares about her daughter. But Rosa could manage less and less mutual understanding with Maria, yeah. And it had become more and more common that she felt discouraged by her own powerlessness. Mmm, sure, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Shut up, child. Sit down and be quiet. Okay. Trick me then. As Maria kicked her feet, a stout old woman sitting in the seat across from Maria picked a candy candy out of her handbag and gave it to her. All right, well that solves the problem for now. <laughs> She's still kicking. Happy Halloween! Kora Maria, <laughs> this random old woman will be the final villain of this game. There may not have been any malice in those words from the old woman. <clears throat> but it seemed that Rosa had taken that in an extremely humiliating way. Mm. She was not able to command her own child, and uh, someone else did it for her. Maria! Maria! That's, yeah, that's definitely a face. Also, uh, I think she has a different outfit from uh, episode one. Does she? Maybe not, I guess. Never mind. Mariano! Hmm. Oh boy, here we go again. Mm. Rosa reflexively hit Maria violently on her cheek. Oh, it's a reflex. That's bad. In a flash, Maria started crying loudly. Rosa immediately snatched the candy from Maria's hand and stuck it out towards the dumbfounded old woman sitting next to them. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. No, it's, it's not your fault. Breathing heavily, Rosa once again held the candy out to the old woman. The woman looked confused for a moment about what she should say, but then understood that perhaps her actions may have caused trouble for this parent and child, and she accepted the candy back, apologizing. Hmm. Feeling bad for your actions? Then... Rosa finally took notice of her surroundings. Mm. Her daughter's clothes were all messed up. She was crying and shouting with her nose dripping. And there were many dumbfounded passengers watching them. 
except for the sound of the train running. The rail car was completely silent. Fortunately, that pitiful silence didn't last more than a short while. However, in its place came an even more painful atmosphere, as everyone whispered. Oh boy, mm. the exact opposite of what you wanted to achieve. Yeah, you've managed to get all the attention now. In a bad way. Maria shouted, cried, kicked, and stomped her feet as usual, paying, paying no heed to the people sitting around her. Impulsively, Rosa tried to slap her again. Oh boy. But she noticed the cold eyes of the people in the train and couldn't do that anymore. Wow. Well, that's a great start. When the train stopped, Rosa got off, forcibly pulling Maria by the arm and almost dragging her along the ground. <laughs> Next track named Rose, well, of course. <sighs> As usual, Maria didn't stop crying. Rosa took her to the end of the platform and hit her cheek again. At the moment she was hit, Maria stopped crying for an instant, but before long she shouted and cried even more than before. Rosa, while uh, Rosa, whose emotions had exploded, grabbed Maria by her collar and pulled her hair as if to whip it out. Mm, heavy stuff. Mm. Mm, those words hurt. Along with those severe words, Rosa hit Maria's head over and over again. The more Maria cried and shouted, the more Rosa hit her. And the more Maria was hit, the more intensely she cried and shouted. A vicious loop, my god. Oh, asking for help, but it's her mom who she's asking help for because she doesn't know anyone else. Man. Mm. Can can you intervene in some way, please? The one who timidly called to her was the station attendant. Rosa glared at him with a look that said, Don't cut into the problems of a mother and child, stranger. The station attendant surely hadn't wanted to talk to her. However, Rosa had been yelling on the platform for, for a much longer time than she had imagined. Her emotional scolding had caused the passengers on the platform to advise the station attendant that it would be a good idea to speak to her. Oh my god, she's actually fully losing it, yeah. Rosa yelled at the station attendant that they would get on the next train and not to bother them anymore. 
and then finally or maybe we should say for the second time she noticed the passengers on the platform staring at her from the distance hmm Rosa sweated slightly she felt the wind chill the sweat tormenting her Maria was still crying shielding her own head mm. no unless this beating stopped she would probably keep crying forever yeah deep breaths deep breaths Mm. Oh boy. As Rosa covered, recovered from the evil heat inside her head, she knew she had surrendered her soul to something bad again. Interesting lines here. Keep them in mind. Mm. Rosa fell to her knees and hugged Maria, whose face was all soggy with tears and mucus. <sighs> Maria, come on, sorry. Come on, sorry. Mm. There we go. Even though I don't know if you should approach the one who you just were abusing physically, I, I think it's... It might be the correct, correct decision in this moment, because of how Maria is, yeah, especially because she was still asking for your help and pleading for you to come back, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Mama. Mama. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Finally. Maria realized that her mother, mother had turned back to being her mother. Then she clung to her mother's body and cried, burying her face in her mother's chest. I, I think she will, but I don't think you should for a long time forgive that, if ever. At least you're apologizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is a very unfortunate situation to find the dialogue hilarious because this is something I had in my predictions in during episode 1 that uh, Rosa would be one to be possessed by Beatrice or, you know, a witch. <laughs> yeah, but I guess yeah, that's how Maria would see it, yeah. Damn. For a long time, the two of them hugged each other, asking for forgiveness and sending words of forgiveness back. Okay, at least... At least we got through it and... I mean, it wasn't a pleasant experience for anyone involved, but... Hmm, at least they reconciled for now, even though there's, yeah, that's indefinitely leaves some scars. Like, uh, obviously, just as everyone knows, never hit a child. Please never do it. Actually, just never. I will absolutely despise you. But like, I can still understand, like, it, it was 
very uh, very much like brought up in uh in episode one that Maria had done that and she's just like acting way younger beyond her what her actual years should be maybe like from Rose's point of view she actually has some not disciplined me mental uh, illness going on that makes her act that way but like Rosa has had to live with that even though it's uh, it feels wrong to say that Rosa has had to live with that because obviously it's just an unfortunate situation but like yeah it I, I reg what I mean to say is that I recognize that living with someone who constantly does random noises can strain your mind to the extreme and like this is just an extreme well yeah one kind of extreme of how that kind of life can like how it can lead down, down to an, a bad path where we end up in a situation where the where the mother ends up beating their child it's just it's tragic and sad i don't know what else there is to say obviously rosa is like fully in the wrong here but i, I can still recognize how or why she is doing the things even if i obviously don't agree with her actions there Like, yeah, I, I, I can also find the constant ooh ooing annoying or, or like actually giving migraines or like some PTSD. No, well, not PTSD, but, you know, like like a triggering response. But if, if you have to endure it for years on end, nonstop. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think Maria is in the wrong in any way, and she is still a child, but, you know, she should still be taught to, like, not explode public. Ah, it's hard, because you obviously want to make your child learn how to act decently in public, and, and you want to, well, discipline them, but, like... It's, it's tough in Maria's case because she's just constantly like that and just always explodes into, well, distraught cries and uncontrollable emotions. Hmm. I don't know. Tough situation. But yeah, def definitely Rosa fully in the wrong. And uh, I would say Maria is also somewhat in the wrong, but not really. Uh, I guess it's just she hadn't learned to, hasn't yet learned to fully act decently in public or something. You know, respect the privacy of others, especially considering that's basically the lifestyle or motto of how Japanese people live their lives. Do not bother others. Yeah. Though I'm not saying it's wrong for to uh, for her to act brazenly and like uh, be loud in public. <clears throat> like it's it, it depends. Some cultures are like that, and like it's it's never wrong. You're free to live your life as you want. It's just uh. She did bother some other people. If I was a passenger, I definitely would have been annoyed at the random child screaming and uh, crying and kicking. I can't imagine the person who was sitting in the seat in front of Maria and uh, Rosa. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to condemn Maria in any way. It's just... An unfortunate situation that came about because of how 
everyone's lives had worked up until now. Yeah. That being said, I, I think I'm being a bit too forgiving for Rosa. Like, I'm not giving her minus points, even though she definitely sh deserves them. Like, she she is the full full on the villain here. But like And and she should probably be locked up behind bars for what she just did. But I, I don't know. I'm I've never been good with kids either, even though I've never been well uh, yeah, I've never been physical with anyone or try to fight anyone or punch anyone or you know abuse anyone. I just, uh, my personal <laughs> degree is just ignore, <laughs> ignore everyone, <laughs> don't interact with them. Uh, obviously Rosa can't do that and she is her mother so she should control the situation somehow. But yeah, beating, beating your own kid is not, <laughs> not the way, not the way. Mm. Oh boy. <laughs> What a scene to start with. White, the drastic difference from uh, how episode 1 started. Oh. Okay, let me just check. I don't think there's anything here. Manages a design company. Hmm. Has yet to start taking it seriously. Far from favorable. Yeah. Let me take a sip here. <clears throat> okay. After a while, the two of them gradually calmed down and naturally drew their faces apart. Maria's face, Rosa's face, both were deep red after crying their eyes out. Maria <sighs> There we go. That is, that's how you should have maybe started the conversation with, and then redirected her energy to somewhere. Like, we'll have our Halloween festival when we get to X place or Y place or at X time or Y time. Yeah. Obviously, it's hard to come up with the correct answers always on the spot. Yeah. Man, sorry, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still a bit shook. When Maria said, help me, mom, or mama, yeah, that that immediately brought a clump to, to, to my uh, throat, and it was like almost instant tears there. Oh boy. Oh, held, it, held them in, though, so no crying for me yet. Yet. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Hey, that was a suite which had been alongside the cash register at the shop where they had eaten breakfast. It was a fancy suite that had a big orange marshmallow in the shape of a jack-o'-lantern stuck on the end of a stick. Maria had wanted that and had insistently pestered for it. Rosa had disallowed it, saying that there was no way she would buy such a sweet right after they had breakfast. And that kickstarted this. Yeah, you definitely owe her that. And much more, but yeah. This fucking family is giving me such emotional whiplash. Whiplash. Maria is being conditioned. What's what's the term? Uh, Stockholm syndrome, the one where uh, you go back to your abusers or something. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Maria. The, sorry, I think I kind of skipped her breathing there. Whatever. The truth was that they had no time to waste loitering around at a stopover station. If they missed the airplane, they would fall half a day behind schedule. Yeah? I mean, they, they 
they did come last to the airport, right? So, in episode one, that is. She should have left home with more time to spare, but she had ended up leaving late after spending too long choosing Maria's clothes. Ah. Because of that, Rosa had been a bit impatient since the morning. Mm. Many small, unfortunate things piling up to create stress, which then implodes later. later yeah. She looked at the clock. They should be getting on the next train immediately. <clears throat> but her daughter had firmly joined hands with her to go by the suite together, and that hand was warm. Mm. To Rosa right now, it was more important to regrow her bonds with Maria. Definitely. Good, good move, good move. Maria was not only Rosa's beloved daughter, she was everything Rosa had. Man, that makes the scene even more sad. Yeah. What's the symbol and on the top left? O and N? O and N, it looks like Shannon, Cannon. Fortunately, she could see that there was a big supermarket right in front of the station. Yeah, makes sense. Maybe she wouldn't be able to find a suite exactly like that one, but Maria would probably accept something similar. similar. Yeah. Besides, Rosa also couldn't show up with a face swelled from crying. Mm. She would have to fix her makeup. Mm. Mm. I don't remember if she had any candy in episode 1. Assuming this is a direct prequel to it. In the same timeline, in the same... With with same events occurring. Hmm. Hmm. The two of them left the turnstiles. And of the turnstiles... Uh, turnstiles of the station in this unknown town. Maria walked across the pedestrian crossing together with her mother, feeling very pleased, as though she was walking in an amusement park. Both faces were still deep red, but warmth could be seen between the two of them, mother and child, as they smiled at each other awkwardly. Anata. Okay, scene switch. Saturday. Yeah. Damn. Approaching the two day total playtime. <laughs> yeah. Rosa saying she can't come or go there yet because she needs to fix her makeup. <clears throat> again. Once again, it's the theme of our. Having a persona, having a mask, having one side to yourself that you present to others. Rather than the uh, naked, bare, ugly self. Well, ugly is a strong word to use, but you know what I mean. The side that you yourself do not fit, uh, deem presentable to others. Those are definitely, definitely themes here. Kind of fitting together with the... Uh, furniture and then a second personality beneath that, although they are kind of different. No, well, no. Still about showing or being one type to the general public and then being your actual self in the private. <clears throat> I do wonder if, uh, if 
Genji has uh, <laughs> anything like that going on. I don't know. He seems pretty stoic all the way. Okay, Natsuhi and Kraus. Yeah? Okay, immediately sus. うん。私はあなたの妻です。無論君にはいつも助けられているし、感謝もしている。うん。わかっています。お仕事のこと。そして、お父様の遺産の話ですね。ですね。君には関係のないことだ。あは。That has nothing to do with you. It's nothing more than my greedy siblings scavenging for rotten meat. Uh, I mean, two things. Uh, one, that is a fun way to uh, <laughs> describe... Uh, I, well, one thing that came to my mind was uh, Kinzo, because he's almost dead, uh, so scavenging for rotten meat, scavenging for Kinzo or Kinzo's goods, yeah. But uh, the second idea that came to my mind, uh, once again tying to my previous idea of what if the gold is in a different form other than the gold, so like, <laughs> the gold is rotten meat <laughs> or something. It's alright, dear. Mm. Well, oh boy, do I have a story to tell you, Natsuhi. Mm. Mm. Natsuhi softly cuddled close to Krause's shoulder. Hey! She spoke words to reward Krause for the difficulties of his work. But... <clears throat> Natsuhi herself was the one who knew best that it wasn't going well. Krause's enterprises were something like a seesaw where large amounts of money swung. Mm. A big investment leads to a large return. But the swaying of a large scale seesaw is large yet sluggish. And not something which so shows immediate results. Yeah. At times, he would make more investments so that the seesaw inclined faster towards the good side. Naturally, he did that because he had the confidence that, in a not so distant future, he would be able to recover all the investments made. However, the seesaws Krauss chose never turned out as he would have liked them to. Hmm. His foresight wasn't wrong, but the times were slow. They never caught up with him. For example, think of a literal seesaw placed in a park. Due, due to its great popularity, there was always someone playing on it. So, if he wanted to play, he would have to wait a long time for his turn. And then, one day, he found that seesaw, vac that seesaw vacant, straddled it, realizing he was the first to arrive, and had it all to himself. However, nobody got on the opposite side of the seesaw, so he couldn't play on it. And no matter how much time passed, nobody came to the opposite side of the seesaw. Mm. The seesaw is a popular piece of playground equipment, so if you waited, 
Another person would definitely show up. Kraus noticed. The weather looked like it was getting worse. Mm. Yeah. So he made a surefire investment that would eventually yield results, but it's taking too long. Thus he is out of time, or out of money, and thus out of time. And he needs more money now. <clears throat> weather, weather looked like it was getting worse. That's why nobody was coming outside to play. Hmm. But the seesaw is a popular piece of playground equipment, so someone would definitely come. If he vacated his place because the weather seemed to be getting worse, someone would definitely snatch his place away. Mm. <clears throat> and he would end up only longingly gazing from a distance at someone else having fun playing on the seesaw again. On one side of the seesaw, he continued to, patient, to wait patiently, all alone. That was Krause's current enterprise and situation, sure. Mm. うん。え、そうです。あなたの先見性はいつも間違っています。あなただけが Lost my own projects like a coward. なぜ自分を信じることができないのか。うん。自分を信じられない男を誰が信じる。誰も信じない。うん。私はいつも歯医者の座るべき椅子に自ら座り、親父にも、お袋にも、兄弟たちにも笑われる。Damn. <coughs> このコンプレックスから解放されるのと、いつになったろう。うん。No、no、it's he couldn't open his paint heart to anyone and would always be compared to his father's great enterprises. Mm. Yeah, okay. Good job. All of them. That sounds ominous. Mm. Any problems with father? Yes. Huh. That is new information. Genji and Nanjo were, in episode 1, firmly stated to be on, on Kinzo's side. Well, Nanjo more neutral, but, you know, Genji definitely. Huh. Alright. あの、豪欲な兄弟たちを決してお父様には合わせます。Though <clears throat> mm. I guess it kind of makes sense. もしもし。はい、ゴーダです。<laughs> Towering cloud in summer. Yeah. I guess it kind of makes sense then that um, Genji gave the key to Natsuhi to go check up on Kinzo instead of him going himself. Mm. Sure. Interesting. Okay. Okay, give me a reason to like you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Ingredients of varied colors had been gathered in the kitchen and the preliminary, preliminary arrangement had already been started. Even though it was still morning, the ingredients for dinner were, were already in saucepans and steaming. Good job. Normally, he had to deal with several assorted matters other than cooking, but on the day of the family conference, he could devote himself to it entirely. Mm -hmm. Tomato. Big can of tomato sauce. It can be faked as blood. Mm, important detail. Keep in mind for later, definitely. Ugoda who was originally a chef. This was surely the greatest gala, gala occasion of the whole year. Yeah, sure. Yeah, dinner is a steak Alright, alright. I am getting kinda hungry, I'm definitely gonna eat after this. It was rare to see Goda to be in this good of a mood towards his fellow servants, yeah? To Goda, who boasted about being a chef who worked exclusively for the Ushirubiya family, being given the right to show off his cooking at the family conference was the greatest honor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why the entirety of OK is capitalized. I guess it's kind of a shortening. So yeah, sure. Ato, Kumasawa ga so chira ni inai ka? Kumasawa san desu ka? Sakihodo mikake mashita ga, ko chira ni wa orimasen. Hmm. Of course she is somewhere else. Always suspicious. Guest house no hoe jinbi ni ikareta no dewa nai desho ka? Hmm. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Umasawa being alone doing quote unquote preparations. Natsuhi saying that she has done all the preparations. Yeah. This just makes me think back on the um I don't know, the weird theory video I did about how everyone could have been the murderer. And, uh, yeah, Kumasawa and Natsuhi definitely getting more points here because, you know, they have been on the island, they have had the time to prepare possible traps, you know. And it's even stated that they have been preparing <laughs> exclusively for uh, things. <laughs> sure. Then again, so has so has Kinzo. Kinzo has had the most time. All right. Genji placed the telephone back on the receiver. Sighing lightly. <sighs> uh, what is the sure frame of? Is that a tower in the distance? A boat and then uh, water here? Not sure. A golden? Golden kettle? Huh. Or, you know, tea something. Yeah. Maybe it's brass, but it's just more golden colored. I don't know. Gold has been a big theme here, so. Wait, did I skip line? Uh, no, sighing lightly. Thinking of Kumasawa, who was no doubt hiding and slacking off, even though things were this busy. Yeah, I mean, she has been stated to be a slacker and loving rumors, but uh. Maybe that is all just a pretense because she is busy doing nefarious things in the back. And the ostentatious Goda, who only felt like doing anything on a day when he could show off, gets his side once again. 
失礼します。Yeah. Hello, you two. ゲストハウスの各お部屋の準備が整いました。うん。お嬢様より、お子様方が泊まれるよう、4人分の用意をするようにとのご指示を賜りましたが、いかがいたしましょう。今年は6年ぶりにバトラ様がお見えになるそうだ。うん。うん。What are your thoughts on him? Also, that is the key case. Uh, it could be like a, the electrical case, also, but I think that's for keys. What is that? Is that like a lamp stand or something? Not ex. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Ojo sama mo itoko yonin de yofukashi o saretai no daro. Mm hmm. Junbi suri yoni. Oku sama ni wa. お伝えしなくてよい。うん。そうですね。<咳>かしこまりました。かしこまりました。今夜は深夜勤で、そのまま明日は早朝勤か。うん、じゃ。しんどい2日間になりそうだな。<笑> More than you realize。そういえば、台風が直撃するって天気予報で言っていますね。うん。大丈夫でしょうか It definitely will not. Taifu ga yohodo sore na i kagiri. Bae ni yotte wa Shinzok no mina sama gato no okaeri no fune ni hibiku daro. I do wonder if the typhoon is just, you know, the pre plot element to set up the uh, uh, trapped island situation. Or if it will have a lot of relevance later on. Like, obviously, it has the plot relevance so far, keeping everyone here, but if it was placed by there by some witch, or if it will play a part other than trapping everyone here later on with something else. Hmm. <laughs> 月曜か火曜あたりまで長引くかもしれない。おうぼい。長丁場になるだろうが、みんなくれぐれも粗相のないように頼む。粗相のやい、粗相のないように頼む。シャノンは焦らぬよう落ち着いて、うん、カノンは愛想よくご挨拶をするように。あ<笑>、あ、はい。注意します。注意します。大切なお客様がお越しになられる日だ。くれぐれも粗相がないように。うん。心得ています。Do you? いつだって。ここには大切なお客様しか訪れませんから。うん。カノン。Ooh, have we ever seen Gorda look down like that? Huh. 今日は本当の意味で。大切なお客様を迎えるカノン、We welcome today an important guest in the truest sense.I as、um, first thought、uh, was that、uh, we are referring to Beatrice.But are we implying that one of the family members who are arriving here is extra important for some unknown reason? Hmm. I think it's just Beatrice, but we'll see. It could refer to some,、uh, someone from the family members who we don't know yet who or why they are important or more important. Hmm. <laughs> I think she's just giddy to see George. Eh? 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 Eh?
because she needs to give an answer, so sucks to suck. <laughs> I don't have any private life. As Shannon blushed just a bit, she turned her gaze away from the clock. Hmm. Was it about time for the airplane carrying the family to arrive at Nijima? She had thought she had been hiding the fact that her long-awaited reunion with George was making her heart palpitate. But Kanon, who stood at her side, understood her perfectly. Yeah, anyone who knows the situation can tell. Airport. Criminal gate. Shannon. <laughs> He's practicing in the bathroom, in the toilet, by himself. Uh, how long have we been going? 56 minutes. Yeah, we can still do this soon. Inside a bathroom stall, George was practicing something over and over, taking out a small velvet box hidden in his pocket. Like a quick draw dessert gunman gunman. Shannon A more powerful feel to it. Yes, yes, George. Go all out. Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> He's even blushing that he has to say it's an order. あ、左手とちゃんと言わないと右手にされちゃうかもしれない。うん。いや、シャノンもそこまで構えとじゃないけど。ああ、でもう少しは自由意志がないとなんだかその。うん。うん。オッケー、ジョージ。アイベットでア
my sister is also a de an adult by now, so I don't treat her like a kid, but yeah, there's still the uh, I'm the elder one feeling, definitely, so yeah. True. All adults are kids no matter how old they are. <laughs> I kind of want to see that animated with him actually <laughs> holding Battler up like a baby you know, from his armpits or something. Hmm. <laughs> あはははやめ。だ、ハハハ。やめ。おはよう。いらしたわよ。いや。うう。うう。餃子さんやないか。マリアちゃん、久しぶりやの。久しぶり。ハロー。うん。マリア。お久しぶりです。でしょ。Did he do that also in uh, episode 1 in the prologue? I need to go back. Maybe I'll do that uh, at the beginning of the next part. Uh, but candy. That. If that's the same, that now holds a much deeper meaning, or like a, that's a nice connection because she did want candy. Maybe that's a sore spot though. Oh. Doesn't have candy. Hmm. But yeah. ご無沙汰してます。綺麗姉さん。秀吉兄さん。と。あら。バトラ君うん。大きくなったわね。いや。今日は会うたびに言われたて恥ずかしいっすよ。お、ローザ。That was a fun line too. いや。いや。<笑><笑> おそかったな。飛行機がダイヤ通りだったらギリギリってとこだったぜ。うん。ごめんなさい。列車の接続がうまくいかなくて。いや。いや、だ、だ。何また天候調査中なのうん。ぼやかない、ぼやかない。船で
Uncle's the son? <laughs> Her brain exploded. She was obviously on her guard. She must have had found it frightening for a large guy like Battler to suddenly start speaking frankly to her. <laughs> Battler noticed that as well and thought of various ways he might approach her. Then he noticed the sweets she had in her hand, yeah. It was the jack-o'-lantern sweet that Rosa had bought for her. <laughs> if you try to take a treat away from a small child, normally you'd expect them to cry and start a fuss. The adults thought that method wasn't good, but surprisingly, Maria looked pleased, her face splitting into a wide grin. Yeah, because someone else understands the enjoyment of the Halloween and has the spirit. Halloween! Halloween! <laughs> Yeah, especially since it's seemingly much, much more rare in Japan. Well, yeah, it is, because, you know, they have a bone. Kora, Batora oni chan to yobi nasai. Gomen ne, Batora kun. Yeah, yeah, kini shi nai sio. Ore wa Batora to yonde kure. Batora. Ore mo, Maria te yobu kara nai. Maria. Ora, Maria, Halloween da zo. <laughs> that was a sweet laugh. From inside her handbag, Maria picked out a jack-o'-lantern sweet identical to the one she had in her hand and presented it to the battler. Hey! You have been deemed worthy. It seemed that Battler accepting it was enough to confirm their friendship. <laughs> the adults felt admiration at how children have their own ways of communicating. Maria, who had been complaining that she wanted to have a Halloween festival, it must have felt like Battler was a friend since he knew about trick or treat. Her defensive posture from before was completely gone. Now she was all merry, as though they had been friends for decades. So that ah, Nihon ja Halloween te minor na event da yo na. Hmm. Kaso gyoret te neri aruku nante. Mukou no news te wa yoku miru kedo. Nihon ja mita koto nai ze. Hmm. Maria mo kaso shita kotta. Yeah. Halloween has been a thing for ages, and but in Japan they had Obon and they had separately a big cosplay culture, which was like, I mean now it's pretty huge in the West too, but like, I don't know, back in the 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, cosplaying was probably unheard of beyond Japan and few select countries. <laughs> yeah. What if this whole game, the children were always the culprits, that's why they survived till the end. They were quote-unquote playing pranks on the adults by <coughs> murdering them. You know? <laughs> it's all a big Halloween party. Always has been. <laughs> Mm. I mean, we all know the answer to that. A cute witch with powerful magical abilities to create sparkles and rainbows and wave her wand and fly on brooms. Mm. Yeah, game. Hello. Scene change. Unberg Lily. Again. 
You trees. Oh yeah, Ojo, sama. Konna tokoro ni. Okay, I think uh, I think that's where we will leave it for now. I still need to record a couple more things today, so yeah. <clears throat> Though I need to eat first. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I might at at the beginning of the next video I uh, will go back and check a couple of things from the uh, very beginning of the game from my uh, previous or my I guess first video of this game to see if uh, some of the dialogue matched. Uh, mainly, I'm interested in uh, in seeing if if uh, fuck, uh, Hideyoshi had a candy to present to Maria, because this time he tried, but he didn't have one. So I'm just wondering if that's a spooky thing. Like, uh, initially he had it, but this time he doesn't have it. <laughs> or if Maria had candy of her own in the first go-around. Yeah. Also, uh, I think, like, I'm pretty sure it's the same date, October 4th, but I would need to go back and check. Double, triple check on that, so, uh, yeah. Need to check if that's also matching. I assume it is. It would make sense that it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we will definitely leave it here then. Uh, let's check the characters first. If everyone is here. Plus Beatrice. <laughs> and nothing in the tips section. Yeah. What is controls? If there are arrows next to the text, you can scroll it using the mouse wheel or two finger swipe gesture. Okay. Hello? Oh, how do I? Oh, is it, it's timed? This goes out. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Let's save it here and continue on next time. There we go. Ah. Uh. Yeah, a different, <laughs> a different mood this time. The first scene of this video kind of just stunlocked me, and uh, yeah, I went on a whole ass rant about that. Oh boy. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. It's a weird topic. I usually don't like to talk about those kinds of topics or, you know, negative things in general, but, you know, since, since it's a part of the game and it's a core part of the game, or at least core part of the initial character dynamic between two characters, it's important drama, so obviously I should take it seriously and talk about it. Yeah. We'll see. This is now the second time it has been brought up, so... It will definitely lead to something later down the line. Don't know if it will happen in episode 2 or later, but uh, I feel like it's going to be a decent part of the bigger picture later on. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Patreon early access up to two weeks. Link down in the description. Cool. Oh, see ya. Oh. Mm -hmm.